Okay guys, so getting accurate readings, you'll see what I use on my desk is one of these USB microscopes. It's got a very long aperture, so there's, uh, there's about, I guess, two, three hundred mil between the component and the rule. And what I do is I put a rule down on the base, you can see over there through the camera. I try to get uh, the rule as center as I can, so what I mean is the millimeter measurement that I'm showing over there is near the middle of the line of the camera, as close as I can. And when you're using a ring, you've got to make sure that the axis that you're measuring, this can't be leaning back, it can't be leaning forward, it has to be looking as close to straight down as you can, so that you get an even, you can evenly see the back of the ring to uh, allow for error of parallax. Okay, so that said, um, <coughs> I had a ring on there before, I don't have it with me at the moment, but I have it in Rhino, so we're going to switch over to the Rhino component of this video and I can close the camera. Alright, so there was a ring on there and I took the photo and what I mean by the error of parallax is a lens is kind of like the human eye. The thing that's closer to you is bigger than the thing that's further away from you. So you can see that you can see the front of the ring, but you can also see the back of the ring. Okay, and so I try to have that gap to be as even as we can in every direction around the ring, which means that you pretty much lined up straight. Then import the part into Rhino, so you use the picture command. So after you've taken the photo, bring the, the, the picture command in, bring the item in, which is what I've done here. All right, so bring it out here like that. Take a measurement, so let's do it again. Then in the back, find the longest distance you can toward even areas of the inside of the of the picture. All right, so I want to measure from the mark at 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm going to measure that distance. So I'm going to need a line from zero. See, a line from zero. Shift tab and type out 40 in Rhino. I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to uh, orient it. Right. I'm going to make sure scale is on 3D. We're going to zoom in. We're going to go as close as we can to the middle of that 60 in there. All right. Don't need super micron accuracy. Just close enough to the middle of the line in the 100 here. Okay, about there. All right. Then we're going to bring it over to here and here. And so now we've oriented that picture. Remember that we're going to measure the back of the ring because we measured the front of the ruler and these two things are touching each other. The back of the ring is touching the front of the ruler. So we want to measure the back end. Right, so I'm going to take a circle. I'm grab a circle from, with two marks, like that. From there, the back of the ring. I'm going to come out to here, the back of the ring here. I'm just holding shift, kind of bring in there if I can. Let's make sure we're kind of oriented. It's a little bit off in this direction. So that, just bring it down, make sure that we're touching the back of the ring evenly everywhere. All right. uh, it looks like it can go a little bit bigger still. Right, so something like that. Kind of not touching there and kind of are touching here, but I think that's a spacing thing. So just make sure that you're evenly touching that back area everywhere. All right. So let's take a dimension from that. A linear dimension through the middle of this to the middle of that. And lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, this piece in the original CAD measures exactly 17.32. Okay, so this printer has printed it. I mean, literally, that is exactly 17.32 is the original file size. So this is how you bring it into Rhino to take some dimensions that are not easy to take uh, in, a, in a component like this any other way. It's hard to get a caliper in there. All right. Okay, guys. So I hope that helped.